Okay, so part two of what we're going to be doing today is going to be the base coating for the highlight colors, which is going to be red and then yellow striping, and then kind of decide if we want to do some sort of striping on the tail. It depends on how it looks with the colors. Um, we're going to actually be doing two colors today um, and be building up to it. So the first color I want to do is this heavy golden brown color and that's going to be a stripe I'm shaking paint right now just so you know um, that's going to be a stripe down the middle of this nuke probably about equivalent to where uh, just between this seam and then uh, this ridge here is going to be and I'm actually going to build up to it by using this heavy golden brown and this heavy golden brown um, has a lot better intensity and will uh, basically cover up the green better so um, it ends up being kind of counterintuitive to not um, painting in the color that you're going to be ending up at, um, but it ends up being easier if you take a darker color like this and then working your way up to, we're going to be going to for a Reaper Bones Candlelight Yellow, which is going to be the final color. Um, what'll, it'll end up being a highlight color and it's easier to build up to it um, and end up there than it is to um, start with yellow and go over it in three, four, or five different coats. So um, back at it again. Um, we swapped out the tile for the wet palette. This is my budget wet palette, which is a Chinese food container um, with some parchment paper on it. This paper towel underneath it is soaked through and that will keep my paint wet because uh, when you're doing a dark color like this you're going to be doing multiple coats and we want to do thin coats so we're going to be taking our time with this setting it down walking away and coming back and doing another thin coat and because of that I don't want to go through a a lot of paint. You see that? That is danger waiting to happen. So sometimes right here um, on the ferrule, which is this metal piece here, or ferrule, if you want to pronounce every single syllable in there, um, a little droplet of water will collect. And uh, I wiped it off on my finger here. Um, but if that droplet of water for some reason was to move onto your piece um, or down into the paint, then it will change consistency of your paint by causing it to run um, everything will go from just fine to a giant runny mess very quickly now um, the focus of what we're going to be doing today uh, the instinct is uh, to basically glob up paint and just you know uh, plaster it on here but the goal is going to be very thin layers here we're going to be building up probably two to three coats of yellow um, and probably two coats of red to get the color intensity that we want. Um, and the best part about doing a kind of worn out, um, I call it any of the punk themes, cyberpunk, uh, steampunk. is that you can not worry about having perfectly clean lines and edges in favor of the fact that you get to do some battle damage and wear and tear and stuff. So right now we're doing the left hand line is what I'm focused on right now as opposed to the right hand line. And now we're going to switch. Uh, I'm right-handed, so orientation is... I gotta be very focused for me, uh, especially with this camera and light in my face. Helps me see. Um, Helps me 
have to have to focus on how I hold things. So I'm just trying to work my way up to that edge so I can have a strong yellow stripe here. If you look, I'm trying to avoid having a large drop of paint left behind in any particular spot. Slowly and evenly work our way up. Now, um, I said it's fun to bring out highlights, um, which it is. The thing I don't want to do is just kind of slop paint on and then clean up the mess after the fact. I still want to be careful at every point stick to my intentions so that I'll be spending less time um, battle damage and wear and stuff like that is very uh, enticing to basically go overboard with some things like that and um, you really have to resist going overboard so that's it first coat um, what I don't want to do is start going over it and say, oh, well, there's a thin spot here and there's a thin spot here and start putting paint on because what it's going to do is start removing the paint that hasn't had a chance to fully dry. So I'm going to wait for it to fully dry. And um, while I'm doing that, what we're going to do is focus on the red stripe. So we're going to be doing a base coat of Mephiston Red. Um, the Citadel baseline is actually amazing for doing very um, thick and thorough cover-ups. Um, so I'm just going to get a little drop of this, transfer it to my palette. You can always get more from the pot later. So just chill out. Uh, it's a pretty wet spot of the palette right here. So I don't have to worry about consistency. Uh, and what I'm targeting is somewhere right in the middle of that gash. Uh, taking a spot right here, say, here, hereabouts, and working my way around. Paint is not wet enough. So if the paint was a little bit tacky, and what happens, and you can kind of see it in that area right here, is that it was getting stuck on the ridges of the filament, and not filling in to be a smooth coat. Now it doesn't have to be 100% smooth right now, once again. Um, now we've thinned our paint out and uh, changed its consistency, and that is okay. We're just going to do multiple coats, not lose sight of the end goal. Just work our way up to the color we want it to be. So I'm focusing very intently right now because this is what I was worried was going to happen. I was going to slowly change, I don't know, altitude, change longitude over the course of this. back right now figure out where I lose sight of the line I think that was it right there and a little bit right there as well so this stuff as you can see is drying pretty quickly and as it gets tacky on the brush I'm gonna re-wet my brush re-wet the paint And we can just go to town. Um, we've got that clean edge established. Now we're going to mix all of our paint to thin it out a little bit. And just start here. I'm building up that base coat. 
Now, of course, it's not going to be perfect. After one coat, we're going to come back and put a second one on as well. Um, as you can see, this paint is a little bit watery right here. So I'm able to push it around pretty easily. And it's okay. If your paint ends up watery, we're just going to do an extra coat later to make sure it's all filled in. Um, watery isn't necessarily a bad thing when we're doing something like this because uh, we do want those worn down and dulled colors um, and maybe not necessarily worried about focusing on you know, the rich vibrant colors on our paint scheme on the outside of the nuke so I'll throw here So this is the water that came off the brush when we washed the brush. Um, just basically using it to adjust the consistency of our paint as we move forward. So with that, uh, as you can see, it's still glossy. It's okay, it's one of those like, when you're stirring the waffles, you just wanna keep going. Stop, set it down, walk away. Um, I'll probably do, the second and third coats off camera um, so we can see the difference between this and this and then what it's going to be like when it's fully coated so uh, be back with the base coats done